okay hello everyone in a new video in this one we are going to explain part 3 of chapter 2 which is the formation of images in the first unit which is unit of optics so we have reached section 8 which is completion of the path of an arbitrary ray okay now section 8.1 due to a real image so here in document 1 we have that the direction of propagation of light is from left to right and the optical axis in the same direction the lens is perpendicular to the optical axis we have the object a b and the image a prime b prime so the first ray this ray incident ray is issued from b and parallel to the optical axis it emerges going to b prime and the second one passing through the optical center emerges without deviation going to b prime so they are telling me to complete with the justification the path of the luminous ray bi so bi is an arbitrary ray and the word arbitrary means random so it's not parallel to the optical axis nor passing through the optical center nor passing through the object focus so in theory we don't know how to complete the path of this ray but if you notice that all the incident rays emerges from the lens going to b prime therefore this ray will emerge going to b prime like this Okay, here they are telling me complete with the justification, which means I need to trace and justify. And we don't forget arrows on light rays that indicate the direction of propagation of light. So now let's do the justification, which is given by. All incident rays. Issued from B. Emerge is going to be prime. Okay. And now in section 8.2, we also have a converging lens and its optical axis. The direction of propagation of light is from left to right, and we have the image A prime B prime given by the lens l due to the object ab so also they are telling me complete to the justification the path of the luminous ray bk so notice that here bk is an arbitrary is an arbitrary luminous ray hitting the lens at the point k so it's not parallel to the optical axis nor passing through the optical center nor uh, uh, passing through the object focus so in theory we don't know how to complete this path but if you notice here that all the incident rays emerges from the lens as if coming from the point image b prime so this ray will also emerge as if coming from b prime so this is the tracing of the emergent ray corresponding to the incident ray bk now let's do the justification all incident rays issued from B emerges as if coming from B prime. Okay, now in section 9 they are telling me construction of an arbitrary point belonging to the object so they are telling me determine by tracing one particular ray the image c prime of c so here we have the lens l and we have the image a prime b prime given by l due to the object a b so they are telling me to determine by tracing one particular ray the image c prime of c so c represents uh, the point belonging to the object AB. So we need to determine the image of C. Notice that here they are telling me determine and the word determine means that we need to trace and justify. Moreover, they are telling me by tracing one particular ray, the image C prime of C. So using one ray, we need to determine the image. And because they are telling me determine, so I need to trace the ray 
and justify it and we need to trace the image and justify it as well so first let's trace this ray they told me one particular ray so we are free to choose any particular ray issued from C so let's consider the easiest which is passing through the optical center we know that it will emerge without deviation so this is the tracing of the ray now so we have done the tracing now let's do the justification then let's say an incident ray issued from C okay issued from which point from the point C because we are determining the image C prime of C okay for this reason the the incident ray is issued from the point C passing through the optical center emerges without deviation so we have done the justification of the ray now we need to trace the image and justify it so notice that here the point C belongs to the object AB therefore the point C prime will also belong to the image A prime B prime okay and we know that C prime will also belong to this emergent ray for this reason the image C prime of C will be the intersection of the emergent ray with the line A prime B prime so this is the tracing now let's do the justification notice that there is no hat found on the object C so no need to place anything on C prime and let's say that then the image C prime of C is the intersection of the emergent ray with the line a prime b prime okay so this is it for section number nine now in section 10 active verbs in physics so let's recall that whenever the question involves only trace draw or complete then no justification is required when the question involves any active verb other than trace, draw, and complete, like indicate, specify, justify, determine, then justification is required. Moreover, in optics, the word construct means that we need to trace and justify. So now it's convenient to solve some exercises as a direct application on what we have done so far. So exercise number one. Okay, document one shows the lens cell. Uh -huh. They mentioned the document, so now I can use it. Shows the lens cell of object focus F and optical axis X prime X. A luminous object BC placed in front of the lens perpendicular to its optical axis at A, in which an incident luminous ray BI is issued from B. Okay, here in document one, we have that the direction of propagation of light is from left to right and the optical axis having the same direction this is the lens L and BC is a luminous object placed in front of the lens perpendicular to the optical axis at the point A F is the object focus and BI is an incident luminous ray so BI is not passing through the object focus however it's uh, passing through the optical axis at this point which is one division in front of the lens and hitting the lens at the point I, which is 0 0.5 divisions downward. In number one, they are telling me that the lens L is converging, justify. Notice that here in front of the lens, we have the object focus is on the same side of the incident ray. And we know that whenever the object focus and the incident ray are on the same side, this means that the lens L is a converging lens. So let's say that for a converging lens,
the incident ray and the object focus are on the same side then L is a converging lens okay and number two they are telling me redraw using the same scale the figure of document one and specify the position of the image focus of frag the direction of propagation of lights from left to right and whenever we need to redraw we always start by drawing the optical axis at the center having the same direction of propagation of light which is from left to right like this okay this is x prime and this is x then we place the lens l perpendicular to the optical axis at the center and now because we know that the lens l is a converging lens we use the correct symbol so this is the lens l and the intersection between the optical axis and the lens L is the optical center O. Now the point F is located on the optical axis two divisions in front of the lens. So one, two, this is the point F. The point A is on the optical axis three divisions in front of the lens. The point B is one division above A. A hat is found on B. And the point C is one division below A. So this is the point C. Now let's trace the object BC. And the point I is located to have a division on the lens downward. And BI is an incident luminous ray hitting the lens at the point I. And we don't forget arrows on light rays that indicate the direction of propagation of light. Finally, the scale along the x-axis is given by 15 centimeters. And along the y-axis is given by 3 centimeters. Now, in the same part, they are telling me and specify the position of the image focus of frame. The word specify means that we need to justify. We know that whenever we have the position of the object focus, we can directly deduce the position of the image focus because F and F prime are symmetric. With respect to O. So F prime will be located here. This is it for part two. Now, in number three, they are telling me to deduce that F is equal to 30 centimeters. Uh, here in this case, it's not mentioned, but F represents the focal length. And they told me to deduce because we need to use the part just previously before. In number two, we have deduced the position of the image focus. So we know the position of the optical center and we, have, and we know the position of the image focus. So we can calculate the focal length by referring to its definition, which is given by the focal length is the distance from the optical center to the image focus so f is equal to o f prime bar so notice that F is equal to O of prime bar, which is the distance from the optical center to the image focus. Notice that this distance is in the same direction of the positive x axis, so it's positive. And now we count the number of divisions between O and F prime. We have one, two. And we multiply by the scale along which we have counted the number of divisions, which is scale along the x axis. This will give me 30 centimeters. So F is equal to 30 centimeters. 
Notice that the focal length is positive, which confirms or verifies that the used lens is a converging lens, because we know that for a converging lens, the focal length is always positive. Now, in part 4, they are telling me trace the path of a luminous ray. 4.1, issued from B and parallel to the optical axis. Here, they didn't, they only mentioned the trace. They didn't say indicate, specify, or construct, or justify. So, we will only trace. So, this is an incident ray issued from B parallel to the optical axis. We know that always incident uh, ray parallel to the optical axis is related to the image focus therefore this ray will emerge passing through the image focus like this and we don't forget arrows on light rays that indicate the direction of propagation of light so done for 4.1 now in 4.2 they are telling me okay trace the path of luminous ray issued from B and passing through the optical center no justification is required so this is an incident ray issued from beyond passing through the optical center. It will emerge without deviation. So done for, po for part 4.2. Now in part 5, they are telling me construct the image A prime B prime of AB. And the word con construct means that we need to trace and justify. So we need to trace the image A prime B prime. Okay, so first let's trace the image. Always the intersection of the emergent rays is the image of the object. So these are the emergent rays that are coming from these incident rays that are coming from the point B. Therefore, their intersection point, which is this, will be the image B prime of B. Moreover, a hat is found on B directed away from the optical axis like this. Then we must place a hat on B prime directed away from the optical axis like this. Let's place the hat. So this is the tracing of B prime. Now let's do the justification. Then the image B prime of B. Is the intersection. Of the emergent rays. Here the, uh, the image A prime B prime consists of two points B prime and A prime. So we already we have already traced B prime and justify it. Now we need to trace A prime and justify it. So in this case A represents the foot perpendicular of B on the optical axis. Therefore A prime will also represent the foot perpendicular of B prime on the optical axis. This is A prime. And now let's trace the image A prime B prime. And now let's do the justification. So what does A prime represent? And A prime is the foot perpendicular of B prime on the optical axis. Now on number 6, they are telling me determine by tracing one particular ray, the image C prime of C. And the word determines means we need to trace and justify the image C prime of C. So, we need to trace the ray in order to obtain the image. Which image C prime of C? This is the point C. Okay, And because they told me determine, so... For the ray, we need to trace and justify, as well as for the image, we need to trace and justify. They told me by tracing one particular ray, and they didn't specify uh, which ray we want to trace, so we are free to choose any ray, then we will choose the one passing through the optical center. Okay, this ray must be issued from the point C because we are determining the image C prime of C. Then let's start by tracing this ray. So issued from C and passing through the optical center like this. 
we know that it will emerge without deviation and we don't forget arrows on light rays that indicate the direction of propagation of light so this is the tracing of the ray now let's do the justification An incident ray issues from C. Passing through the optical center emerges. without deviation we have done the justification of the ray so now we need to trace the image and justify it notice that here the point C belongs to the line AB so the image C prime will belong also to the line A prime B prime and we know that it will also belong to the emergent ray this emergent ray that's coming from the incident ray that's coming from the point C therefore C prime will be the intersection of the line A prime B prime with the emergent ray like this so this is the tracing now let's justify then the image C prime of C is the intersection of the emergent ray with a line A prime B prime so this is it for part 6 now in number 7 they are telling me specify the nature of the nature of the image A prime B prime and calculate its size A prime B prime so let's start by specifying the nature So notice that the object AB is pointing upward and the image A prime B prime is pointing downward which means that they are in opposite direction which means it is inverted and we know that whenever the image is inverted with respect to the object then it is real. Then let's say since it is inverted with respect to the object AB then the image a prime b prime is real and now we uh, okay one could give another reason why the image is real so notice that the object a b is in front of the lens and the image a prime b prime is behind the lens and we know that whenever the image and the object are on opposite side of the lens just this means that the, that the image is real and also they are telling me to calculate the size of the image A prime B prime now A prime B prime consists of one two two divisions and we multiply by the scale along which you have counted the number of divisions which is scale along the y-axis this will give us six centimeters always all quantities in physics must have unit finally it's a good habit to write our final answer in a box so make the task easier for the corrector to notice our correct answer and now in number eight they are telling me complete with the justification the path of the luminous ray bi so we need to trace and justify the path of the luminous ray bi so bi is an arbitrary ray hitting the lens at the point i notice that all incident rays that are issued from the point B emerges from the lens going to B prime so with no exception this ray BI will emerge going to the point B prime and we don't forget arrows on light rays that indicate the direction of propagation of light
This is the tracing. Now let's do the justification. So eight, all incident trees. Issued from B. Emerge is going to B prime. So by this we have finished solving exercise number one. Now in exercise number two, they are telling me the image A prime B prime of an object A B given by a lens L is collected on a screen E. Uh -huh. So the image is collected on the screen. Placed behind the lens. So the screen is placed behind the lens in which the object A B is placed in front of the lens. F and F prime are the object and the image focus of L respectively and its focal length F is F, small f. The figure below, uh -huh, they mentioned the figure, so now I can use it. It's drawn using a scale 1 by 5 centimeters. Number 1, specify the nature of the image A prime, B prime. So since they told me collected on screen, and we know that whenever only real image can be collected on a screen. So let's say that uh, since it's collected on the screen, Then the image A prime B prime is real. Now in number two, they are telling me deduce that they use lens as a converging lens. Okay, deduce means that we need to use the part just previously before. In number one, we have uh, justified why the image is real. And we know that only a converging lens can give a real image which can be collected on screen. Since only a converging lens can give a real image which can be collected on the screen then L is a converging lens Now, in number three, they are telling me reproduce using the indicated scale, the figure of the above document. Knowing that the direction of propagation of love is from left to right, and the optical axis have the same direction, which is from left to right. So, oh, this is x prime, and this is x. Then we place the lens L perpendicular to the optical axis, using the correct symbol of a converging lens. So this is the lens cell. Now the point F is located one, two, three, three divisions in front of the lens. Okay, this is the optical center O and F prime is the symmetric of F with respect to O. The point A is located one, two, three, four, five, six, six divisions in front of the lens. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is the point A. Now the point B is located two divisions above A. And now let's trace the object AB. And behind the lens, we have the screen E, which is located. One, two, three, four, five, six, six divisions behind the lens. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the screen E. And we don't forget the scale which is given by 1 by 5 centimeters, which means each divisions, each division along the x-axis is given by 5 centimeters, and each division along the y-axis is given by 5 centimeters as well. So this is it for number 3. Now in number 4, they are telling me specify the position of the image A prime of A. Okay, And specify means that we need to trace and justify at the same time. So notice that A is on the optical axis. Usually in order to construct the image or trace the image of A, A the image 
of a which is a prime first we trace the image b prime then we deduce the image of a prime because it's the foot perpendicular of b prime on the optical axis but here they are directly telling me specify the position of the image a prime of a previously the, we didn't trace any ray issued from b and we didn't trace the image b prime of b as well okay but here because we have the screen a we can directly deduce the position of the image a prime of a because since a is on the optical axis then its image will be also on the optical axis so it's somewhere here on the optical axis moreover we know that the image is collected on the screen so now we know that the image will be on the optical axis and it will be on the screen so this is the point which belongs to the optical axis and the screen therefore this point represents the image a prime of a notice that on the point a we don't have we don't have any hat so we don't place anything on a prime so this is the tracing of a prime now let's do the justification since the object is on the optical axis then its image will be on the optical axis and we know that it is collected on the screen it's collected on the screen so for this reason then the image a prime of a is the intersection between the optical axis on the screen and number five they are telling me determine using the path of fundamentalist ray the position of the image b prime of b and the word determine also means that we need to trace and justify so using the path of one luminous ray the position of the image b prime of b so we need to trace the ray and justify it we need to trace the image and justify it as well so using the path of one luminous ray they didn't specify which ray we should use so we are free to choose any and the one which is easiest is the passing through the optical center we know that this, this ray will emerge without deviation so this is the tracing of the ray now let's justify it So we are in number five, an incident ray. Moreover, here they didn't specify this ray should issued from which should be should should be issued from which point. But because we are determining the, uh, the position image B prime of B, then for sure it must be issued from the point B. So an incident ray. issued from B passing through the optical center emerges without deviation so we have done the tracing and the justification of the ray now we need to do the tracing and the justification of the image so let's start by the tracing usually in order to determine the image of the object we need uh, at least two emergent rays but here they told me using the path of only one luminous ray and this is because we have the screen so we know that the image is being collected on the screen and we know that b prime will belong to this emergent ray because this because it corresponds to this incident ray that's issued from the point b therefore b prime will belong to this emergent ray and to the screen so it will be the point of intersection between the screen 
and this emergent ray. Moreover, a hat is found on B directed away from the optical axis like this. Then we must place a hat on B prime directed away from the optical axis like this. Let's place the hat. So this is the tracing. Now let's do the justification. Then the image B prime of B is the intersection. of the emergent ray of the screen. Now in number six they are telling me to trace the image A prime B prime. So this is the tracing. done now in number seven they are telling me to determine graphically the focal length so we know the position of the optical center and damage focus and we have the scale we can calculate the focal length referring to the definition the focal length is the distance from the optical center to the image focus so f is equal to of prime bar which is the distance from the optical center to the image focus notice that this distance is in the same direction of the positive x-axis which is positive and now we count the number of divisions between o and f prime we have one two three and we multiply by the scale along which you have counted the number of divisions which is scale along the x-axis this will give me 15. Since the scale is in centimeters, then the value of f will be in centimeters. So f is equal to 15 centimeters. So that's it for me in this video, guys. In part 4, we'll complete the explanation of this chapter.